Welcome to Center House Crafts. Today is October 30th, 2020. This is Vlogmas number seven, and it's our last one. Tomorrow is Halloween. <laughs> Scary. Yeah, I'm so excited. I, oh, God, I'm so excited. Halloween one tomorrow. Yay! Halloween two tonight. Yay! Anyway, hi. How are you? First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone who participated in the movie suggestion from Tuesday's video. I totally appreciate it. Second, hey Detroit, how are you? Oh my God, I love Detroit. I love the state of Michigan, it's amazing. I wanna say hi to Pennsylvania, you know who you are. I wanna say hi to Wales. I wanna say hi to two Helens in Scotland. Hello, hello, hello. I wanna say hi to everybody else who didn't participate, but you're super cool still. And wherever you are, hello. I'm sure I'd like your community too. So anyway, yeah, so last one, golly, it's weird. Um, I will be talking about the movie I chose. I'm sure no one's going to be surprised by my choice, but I just want you all to know that I had two nightmares and was woken up last night twice by this film. Yeah, thanks for that. Appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, I guess we should get started. I have some sewing to talk about, some knitting, some cross stitch, obviously, because that's going on. And then we're going to talk about the films that I watched this week. Uh... I just want to point out my pumpkin, which was carved by myself on Tuesday night. And it was carved based on the template from Halloween 1 from 1978. So that is the original Halloween pumpkin template. It is sitting on um, a quilt that my mom made me the year before she died. She knew I loved Halloween. So, yeah. So she made that for me. I don't want to talk about it because it'll make me cry. But yeah, I was super happy. My son sent me the last of my things that were in storage in his garage, and that was a part of it. Plus, he sent me a bunch of Thanksgiving stuff. So thanks, Joseph. I appreciate it. Mostly Emily, though, because she did all the work, really. Joe just booked the shipping. Anyway, let's talk about crafts first. So, um, I received the new uh, Simply Sewing magazine on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, I decided it might be a good way to get back into sewing if I just made this. It's called Added Flare, and it's basically a pattern where you take your husband's shirt and you turn it into a top for yourself. There we go. Very good. So I took one of Ian's old paint t-shirts and, oh my goodness, one second please. And I'm gonna grab Hagrid, we'll be right back. Eventually. So this is what I did. I wasn't very good. I didn't do a very good job of keeping it. Um, don't know if you can see that very well or not, but you can see the paint flicks on it <laughs> everywhere, but best to use an old shirt, right? Um, so what you do is you take your husband's old top and you measure 14 inches down from this collar tab all the way down, measure, measure that 14 inches. You cut to the bottom half of the shirt off, then you cut up the sides. So, because obviously it's your husband's shirt, it's probably going to be too big for you. It was for me. And then you cut that off. So you cut that off to fit it. So basically what I did was I put it on my body and I pinched it and I marked it and then I pinned it and then I cut it off and then I sewed it. Well, I didn't sew it yet. Then you cut out the arms. So you curve the arms in because normally your husband's shoulders are wider than yours. So you want to make sure that that fits. You take the sleeves, you cut the sleeves off about, I don't know, from the cuff. It was probably about six inches. So above the tab for the button. Um, I didn't follow the directions for the sleeves. Um, what I did was I, I used a basting stitch on my sewing machine and I stitched three eighths of an inch. I believe it was three eighths of an inch from the edge, the raw edge of the bottom of the sleeve. I turned that up. I folded it in half. So I turned the raw edge to the stitching line I ironed that and then I turned it up an inch measuring with my um, my hem ruler 
and then I pinned it and I stitched it down, but I did two lines of stitching on it. So yeah, um, I don't know why I took the care with it because it is just something I'm going to wear around the house, but you know, then you take the bottom half of the shirt. So then you sew up the sides and you put the sleeves in and then you take the bottom half of the shirt and you baste around the upper edge of it and you gather it and then you pin it to the top half of the shirt and sew it together and that's it it came out really well it fits nice it looks good i'm really surprised i kind of wish ian had more heavy shirts that i could pinch but when he came home last night i said i i mangled one of your shirts and he's like nah, that's okay looks good <laughs> i was like thank you but yeah so yeah so you can try that um you can also get yourself a copy of the uh, simply sewing magazine from the current copy of it and do that yeah. otherwise just let me know if that you want to do it and maybe I can help you out so there you go right I'm gonna send Hagrid back to his lodge and we'll be right back with some knitting so let's talk about the pumpkin mitts these are scary pumpkin mitts by I can't enunciate her name but it's there uh, last time you saw this I was just starting the um, the skeletons on the bottom of the mitten and now I have come to the point where I have finished those and have started working up the jack-o-lantern as you can see I've got a smile here and on the back we have the increase for sorry <gasps> the increase for the thumb and the inside mitten pattern started so yeah jack-o-lanterns are done it's going very well I'm surprised I got that much done, to be honest with you. But, yeah, I worked at it, and they're coming along okay. The next thing I want to show you is my cross-stitch from the 2020 Ouija Sal by Tiny Modernist. And I have finished the castle and am now working on the candelabra right below it. Yeah. Uh, I will finish the candelabra today, probably. And I will start on this side, but this, after today, this is going away until January. Yeah. So, Helen, I nearly got it done. But I'm going to be working on some Christmas cross-stitch starting on Sunday. I'm so excited. Um, and a very, very small turkey cross-stitch for, like, a little pillow to put out um, for Thanksgiving this year. Found a free pattern on Pinterest, which is my go-to place for free stuff anyway yeah so that is that um I guess we will get into after I drink some coffee we'll talk about the movies okay let's talk about films so obviously there were very <clears throat> there was almost a unanimous call for myself to watch The Shining. It's a book by Stephen King. I did watch it by myself yesterday. It was a huge mistake because I had two nightmares last night and yeah. Yeah. Nightmares. <laughs> nightmares. Yeah. Just, just so you all know, I watched Trick or Treat last night, which I'll talk about next. And that didn't give me nightmares. Mm -hmm. But The Shining did. So again, The Shining is based on a book right, by Stephen King. It stars Shelley Duvall and Jack Nicholson. And it takes place in a hotel in Colorado called The Overlook. Now, Jack Nicholson takes on a job as a winter caretaker. The hotel is closed in the wintertime because it's too hard to get up the mountain to get to the hotel. So they hire somebody every year and... The last few years, as Jack is told in his interview, the people go mad. And the last guy, I think he hung himself. Jack then tells, in all of his obnoxiousness and self-confidence, not to worry, that won't happen to him. Guess what? It does. Um, he grows ever more aggressive and violent towards his wife and his son. And his son who is sort of clairvoyant starts to see dead people in hallways um and yeah 
come play with me, Danny. Um, yeah. It's pretty fucking creepy. Um, my dreams last night were about the, the lady in the tub. And I feel like there's somebody behind me right now. I'm just going to turn around. <laughs> I am so creeped out. Too many horror films in the last 30 days. Um, yeah. Uh, so the lady in the tub, I had a dream about her. I also had a dream about the blood on the floor in that hallway, except it was on my hallway floor. So, yeah, it's pretty creepy. Yeah. So, um, without giving away the ending, <laughs> everything progresses. It gets more and more aggressive. Jack becomes more and more aggressive. Danny, the, the boy, he becomes more and more frightened. He knows something's wrong, but yeah. Mom, Shelly Duvall, tries to keep him safe. She ends up calling the summer caretaker and saying, there's something wrong, it's bad, bad things are happening, da, da, da. He heads up in like this snow vehicle thing. He ends up biting the fudge. <laughs> and Shelly Duvall and her son, in an attempt to escape this, the horror of the hotel and dad slash husband um, run out into the snow and end up in a maze. It's a hedge maze and pursuit ensues. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, for creepiness and because I love Stephen King, five bats the shining not gonna ask you guys next year because that gave me dreams. <laughs> but thanks for sharing everybody it was nice to hello blossom you scared me <laughs> it was nice to read everybody's comments and everybody's comments who you're not getting nothing out of me because i don't watch that shit. <laughs> so the next movie that we're going to talk about is uh trick-or-treat now this is sort of an amalgamation of different stories that happen in the same community, but are experiences of different people. Um, yes, and it all sort of centers around this one little character, this little trick-or-treater. And he is, how do I explain this? He's sort of the guardian of Halloween, as it were. So, I don't know if you all know this, but I never blow my pumpkin out myself on Halloween night. Um, I let the candles go out on their own, even if I go to bed. I know that's dangerous, but I still do it um, because it's bad luck to do that. And it's so funny because this is one of the things that he's guarding. That and, you know, you don't tell trick-or-treaters no. You don't shut your light off. Um, you don't play pranks on people. So these stories all happen sort of sequentially, but some of it in parallel. It's really weird. So I'll just give you an example. There's the principal of the high school who is not a nice man. He has a little boy and he's poisoned the candy that he's giving children. He's also killed two of them and he's burying them in his front yard, claiming that he's digging because his septic system is bad. Um, his little boy knows his dad's a murderer and actually participates in some of the happenings post-murder. Um, and it's kind of laid in there that his dad was the same way. So, for example, a little boy from his school who has is overweight and has diabetes, comes and trick-or-treats, and he sits on the porch with the, um, the principal, and the principal's put cyanide in his candy bar, and the little boy starts to throw up, and he's throwing up blood, and all sorts of things are happening. And he's dead, a, the principal, he throws up on the principal, the principal drags him into his house. These other three kids, who are having their own story, come trick-or-treating, and uh, they, they knock on the door and say trick or treat and can we have your pumpkin? He's like, yes. And then 
they scream because he's got blood all over him and they're like nice costume and things like that and he's like yes so then he shuts the door and unbeknownst to everyone around he takes this little boy's head off and takes it to the basement and proceeds to carve this kid's head out like a pumpkin with his son that's the kind of movie that this is it's sort of done in a comic book way so and I'm not smiling because I think that's cool because I know it's not but you know just the way they do it it's just a Halloweeny thing um but yeah so the these stories progress and progress and progress and this little trick-or-treat kid has something to do with every single one it ends up the principal dresses himself as this big sort of he looks like someone who you know the axe man at a beheading but he's put these vampire teeth in and he goes downtown to the, they have this big carnival uh, for Halloween in this community he goes downtown he finds a girl he uses his teeth to bite her neck he knows he's killing her but he does this anyway and he's got these super sharp teeth um, then he walks away and he meets this other girl dressed like Red Riding Hood ends up she takes him away to this party um, where her sister and her friends are ends up all these girls are really werewolves and he ends up as a meal there so there's other stories that take place during this that are probably much better to describe to people but those are the ones that i chose so trick-or-treat i will give five stars to trick-or-treat or five bats sorry to trick-or-treat i thought it was really good i watch it every year it's a staple yeah I just want everybody to know that I did watch The Haunt. Um, I watched that yesterday afternoon. And um, I'm not going to talk about it because it is super violent. It is super violent. And I don't think that the level of violence in that film is probably appropriate. The little kids can see this, so I really don't want to talk about that. Although I just talked about Jobs and Kids that off. But this is worse, if you can imagine that. So let's lighten the mood a little bit here. And let's talk about the other two things that I watched this week. The last two things I'm going to talk about are two Disney. Um, one's a Disney short and one's a Disney feature. One is Donald Duck's Trick or Treat and the other one was um, Sleepy Hollow, which is narrated by and everything is done by um, uh, Bing Crosby. So yeah, so in traditional disney way fashion um the donald duck is very funny donald duck being grumpy old donald duck doesn't want to give huey dewey and louie um uh, any trick-or-treats a witch named hazel comes along and she gives them a hand and donald ends up beating his head into a board or a door and it's all pretty cool it's all pretty cool it lasts about 10 minutes but i watch it every year i watched it every year with my kids so i watch it now and my oldest son watches it with his kids. The Sleepy Hollow, his version, Disney's version, version of Sleepy Hollow was really, really good. Um, that is Bing Crosby. He narrates it. He sings. And um, it's pretty much a trimmed down version of Sleepy Hollow. Um, Ichabod falls in love with Katrina. He comes to this town. He falls in love with Katrina. And he goes to um, Baltus Van Tassel's Halloween party. He has some competition from Brom Bones. And Brom sings a song that scares the crap out of him at the Halloween party. And then Ichabod leaves on his mule <laughs> to go back home. And Brom chases him as the Headless Horseman. And yeah, fun ensues. It's very good. Very good. So yeah, so give it a go. Um, uh, Sleepy Hollow, Disney's Sleepy Hollow. Right, um, well, uh, tonight I will be watching Halloween 2. Tomorrow I will be watching um, Halloween 1 from 1978, the original with Jamie Lee Curtis. I will be podcasting again next Friday, so I will let you know what happens then with those, but... I just wanted to say happy Halloween to everybody. Thanks for sticking through with me through the month of October for Vlogoween. I had a really good time doing this. And 
I am going to do it next year because it's so much fun. <laughs> it was just so much fun. It was fun to share things. Um, I hope next year to get everybody more involved. I'm planning a few things for next year. Um, I'm hoping to do a Halloween bingo uh, where I will, uh, there will be prizes and uh, you're going to have to spot things in the background and when I say things keywords um and yeah and then there'll be just a plain old giveaway for Halloween I don't know if I'm gonna do like a, a cross stitch along a stitch along or um a knit along a knit along is probably not enough time to do that so it'll probably be a stitch along for some free pattern um that we find for Halloween so yeah yeah. but anyway all right I'm gonna let you go I've got to edit this and then yeah I'm gonna go watch some spooky things on the telly anyway thanks so much honestly thank you so much for watching I really really appreciate it yeah thanks and happy happy Halloween I hope you stay scared stiff take care I'll see you Friday <laughs>